Sample size. Sample size should be large. Next condition, quickly. Uh, it should be an outcome of a probability sample. That is the reason why, you know, when you go for data collection, preferably, you know, as far as possible, you should go for a probability sampling method, not for a non-probability. If you go for a probability, then you will be in a position to use parametric statistical techniques. Okay? What are the conditions for using a probability sampling method? You know what is a probability sampling method? Yeah? Hmm, what are the conditions, prerequisites? For using, for choosing a probability sampling method, the most important aspect is you should have the list of all the elements in the population. If you don't know what is your population size, if you don't know what is your population size, then you cannot write in your thesis that I have drawn a... Right? So have clarity on this. You cannot just write that I have selected a probability sample. It's not quite just like that. It's it's all based on. Ah, that time, how do you use, use? Right? So probability sampling mandates that you should have the list, not only just knowing the sample population size, you should all it should be tangible, it should be there on your list. The list of all the elements that constitute the population should be there. And from that we are going to select. From that, we are going to select elements into the sample based on equal chance or using a probability. Right? So that is how we have a probability sample. Probability sample, random sample. Random sample is one aspect of probability sample. Right? So probability sampling, this is a very important part. So if you are, you, you cannot just take things for granted. So you should have clarity. What is what? What is what? Right? Okay, so one important condition for using parametric is that your probabilities, you, that the researcher should use probability sampling. Then, how many conditions we have covered? Hmm. Hmm. Next condition? Interval scale. Then ne one more condition is, it should also have homogeneity of variances. I have shown you, no, homogeneity of variance condition. We have discussed, we have seen homogeneity of variances. So if these conditions are fulfilled, then we can use pro then we can use parametric. If one of the condition is violated, then we have to use non-parametric. Okay? Right? Any doubts? Any doubts, any observations? Okay, then we discuss T test. T test is a parametric test. T test is of how many types? We have one sample, two sample. In two samples, we have independent, independent samples t-test and paired samples t-test. In independent samples t-test, depending upon the homogeneity of variance condition is met or not, you have to accordingly choose a particular t-value. All right? Okay? Now, wh now what is t-test? T-test is appropriate, t-test is adequate. If you have two groups, now, can you give an example where we can use t-test? So that we can go to the next test. See, whatever test you discuss, you have to learn about that test. Every test will have its strengths and weaknesses. If a test has certain limitations, that means there is another test waiting for, another test waiting there to fulfill the, to fulfill the drawbacks of this test. It is just like that. Isn't it? Life is also like that. Okay? You will not have everything in one go right now. Okay? So, so there is some problem. Then that problem will get identified over a period of time. And even if that problem is identified again, it will again have the, some problem, the new one. So it just it, 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 that is how it evolves. Right? Okay? Now what is T-test? See, T-test is a parametric inferential statistical test. And we use T-test for comparing the significant differences of two groups. If you have three groups, if you have several groups, then we cannot use t-test. You can still use t-test. See, it is not that you cannot use t-test. Then in such a situation, what you should do is, you should compare two at a time. For example, you have four groups. Okay? A, B, C, D. Example, tangible example, clear cut, explicit example. Four sections long. Okay. We have students from four different sections, A, B, C, D. Now, what is our objective? 
Our objective is to compare the marks of students coming from four different sections, A, B, C, D. Then how do we do the analysis? What is the objective? We are comparing the means. If you do not want to compare the means, then you cannot use t-test or you cannot use ANOVA. Hmm? Again, that is also there. Right? So what do you want to compare? You have the marks of students. Okay? And we are comparing the means. And when can you use the mean? When your variable is measured in interval scale. All right? If it is ordinal, we can't use it. Right? If you have got the marks in terms of grades or in terms of ranks, mm. then you cannot. Right? Try to understand. The variables are very, very important. How did you capture the data? How, what is your variable measured in which scale? Then accordingly. All right? OK? Now we'll go ahead. you have any doubt you have you uh, anybody has tried SPSS all of you have SPSS right you have your laptops at home or you have used Jamma V hmm? yeah, this is one data which I have with me okay see the variables see the variables and we can do the analysis this is a very simple data audit the data which we have discussed in the last class Okay, we have student code, then we have age, gender. Gender is coded as male and female. Okay, one and two. Then we have section. Section students coming from different sections. Section A, section B, section C. Okay, then these are the marks of students in different subjects. Mathematics, English. Okay, then this is achievement motivation score. These are study habits. Okay. And then we have emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is a categorical variable. It is not a metric variable. It is a non-metric variable. Okay? So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 indicates low, moderate and high on emotional intelligence. Right? Then this is a private tuition. This is also a categorical variable. So if from here you can identify, understand whether they are categorical variables or not. Okay? Whenever you have these descriptors, codes, then it means it is a categorical way. Similarly, mother's occupation. Mother's occupation is also a categorical way. Right? Now then we have student satisfaction. That means you directly have the scores. Then group intermediate, group intermediate, and we have total marks, percentage of marks. Okay? Then we have division of students. So we'll look at the data. So these are the variables, just to make you understand that these are the variables and these are the labels. Okay? And these are the values that we have. Now we'll go to the data view. Okay. As you can see, gender is coded as 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay. Marks are also, we have the marks. Achievement motivation is also a score. Then we have study habits. Then private tuition is coded as 1, 2, 1, 2. Okay. Then mother's occupation, student satisfaction is a score. Okay, group intermediate is 1, 2, 3, but it is not given values. 1, 2, 3 means whether it is MPC, BIPC or CEC. Okay, this is the total marks. This is how we got percentage of marks. Then we have division. Okay. Now what shall we do with this data? What analysis can we do? What analysis can we do with this data? How do we get this division? How do we get the total marks? You are clear? How do we get the total marks? 
How do we get the total marks? Hmm? Total marks is the total of all the marks, right? No, you know the operation. How do you get? How do how do you get? You have to use this comma, transform comma. Hmm? You don't have to do. SPSS will already do all this for you. Okay? So using transform and compute, you can get total marks. This is how we got total marks. Now how will you get percentage of marks? Uh, percentage of marks again total divided by the maximum total will you get first then how will you get division division how will you get division how will you get division here japan division at loss me generally you tell me how you get division research also you sometimes so what are we doing here what is happening we are converting a metric variable into a category non metric variable right okay what are we doing we are thinking or we are learning a mechanism or a process where we are converting a metric variable to a okay right so you may have some scores low moderate and high you can use the same you can use the same facility for doing that so how do you, how will you do so this is this is the division right this is the division of students so you want me to discuss this or you want me to you want me to discuss it. so you are interested in learning this or you know you are not interested yes, sir. you want me to discuss this yes sir. Oh. so what i'll do is because we already have percentage of marks okay I will delete this percentage of marks also, okay, and I will also delete division, okay. So we already have total marks, okay. So total marks, okay, we'll delete, delete this also. Then we'll try to understand the whole thing. So we here we have marks. We have marks of how many students? We have marks of math, science, social, and English. Okay, so we will get the total marks. Okay, so how to do that? Transform, compute. Okay, so I, have to, I should get total marks. Total underscore marks. Okay, one important uh, limitation of uh, you know writing the names. Please remember when you practice on your uh, at home, you know, then it will give you an error message. Then you should not get worried. So what is a mistake that you will commit or what is a mistake that you might commit is that you will give a space here. If you give a space here, okay, I have given a space, then, then what happens? It will give an error message. That's all. So to cover up that space, I am using underscore, total marks. So what is a numerical expression? This, marks in maths plus general science plus social studies plus English, okay? So this is the total marks, right? So just say okay. Okay, this is the output file. Yesterday I have told you that whenever 
we do any operation on the data file. See, this is our data file. This is our output file. Whenever we do any operation on the data file, the result of that operation is first shown on the output file. So later on, if you want to, tomorrow if you want to know, how did you get the total marks? So if you have, if you save this, then you can decipher from this syntax that, you know, total marks is marks in maths plus science plus social plus right? So this is what we have done. So you can just see here, in the last column, total marks has come. We deleted this, again we got it. Total marks has come. Okay, now how to get percentage of marks? How to get percentage of marks? Again, go to total. Again, go to transform. Okay, transform. Compute variable. Okay, we still have the same. Okay, let us have this whole thing. Then we instead of this, we will write percentage of marks. Okay, so what I will write here? I will write the name of the variable as percentage marks. Okay, percentage of marks. So, this whole thing is divided by how much? What should I divide? How, now, how, how will I get percentage of marks? Tell me. Total marks. Uh, total marks is how much? This marks in mathematics and marks in general science, marks in social and marks in English, it was conducted for how many marks you should know? Yes, 100. Okay, if you believe that it is 100, then we will divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 7, so 400. So those marks were conducted out of 24. Okay, it was not out of 25. Ma mathematics test was conduct conducted out of 24. Similarly, science was conducted out of 24. Okay, so what should we do now? Divided by? Divided by? 24 into 4, so how much? 96. 96, right? Yes. You are able to understand? Yes. Right? So, I divided by 96, that's all, divided by 96. 96, no? 96, 6 is here. That is 6 only, no? Yeah, 6 only. Then multiplied with? 100. Multiplied with 100. Okay, so percentage of marks is? These marks, or we are combining all the marks, divided by, I have to use divided by symbol. Divided by symbol is this. Divided by symbol is this. Okay. Divided by 96 into 100. So, is my syntax correct? Yes. Okay. Is it correct? Yes, sir. So, we'll say, if it is correct, it will, we will get the answer. Otherwise, we will get, get an error message. That's all. Can you use directly total marks there, sir? Instead of... Ah, we can use because it was already there, no? Ah, yes, so we can. Mm, that is why because it was already there, I took the benefit of that. Okay. Because uh, yeah, what is say? What you are saying is we could have ah, taken total, total marks by? divided by ninety six and hundred. We should have done that also. Yes, but sir. okay. Yeah. See here. So we got this. That means we we have got the variable. Okay, percentage of marks. Okay, we got total marks, we got percentage of marks. Now, what should we now get? Division. division. Mm. How will we get division? The rule is there, 0 to 39. So, before that, we will see we will see the distribution of the scores. We will see what is the lowest and what is the highest. Okay? We will see the distribution. So, how to see the distribution? You can go to descriptors, frequencies. Okay? How did I go there? See here, analyze, descriptors, frequencies. Okay? Then, my variable is percentage of marks. Now, I want to come record percentage of marks into division. Okay? So, statistics, we will see the minimum and maximum. Okay, because we are basically interested in knowing what is the minimum, what is the range, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we are basically, right now, we are interested in this. Okay? Okay. So, we will see what is the range. So, it is starting from 52 to 79. So, there are total how many students? 100 students. So, the minimum is 59. So, maybe, third, we don't have third class students. You are able to understand the reason why I did this. 
because the because we have done this now otherwise you know otherwise we we, we should do 0 to 39.99 40 to 49.99 our in our data the minimum value is 52 and the maximum value is 79 uh, no need of doing third class fail that means we don't have any students who have failed all right right you are able to understand no okay so now tell me now this is okay all right so now we'll go to analyze. Now, how should I do? You have understood the logic. See, we are converting percentage of marks to this. So, what is our minimum score? 52. 52, whatever we found out. This is not needed for us. Okay? So, 50 to 59. So, maybe 52, no? 52? 52. 52.08. 52.08 is our percentage of marks. So this will be second class. This will be first class. This will be division. Okay. So if I'm coding like this, so I give this as one. I call this as two. I call this as three. Okay. So the mark which is between 52.8 to 59.99 will get a coded as one. Will be coded as one. This will be coded as two. This interval will be coded as two. And this interval will be coded as three. All right. Then later on, we will say 1 means second class, 2 means first class, 3 means prestige. That is how we do Okay? Now, let's see how it happens. Uh, now, so we have to recode. Recode. There is an option called recode. Okay, this option we will use. Record into different variable. Record into same variable. See, both these are basically the same. Both these operations are same. The only difference is if you record into the same variable, percentage of marks will get changed to division. If you use record into different variable, that means we will also have percentage of marks and we will also have division. Right? Okay, so we will use this. Record into different variable. Record into different variable means we will create a new variable. But which variable we want to record? Percentage of marks. Okay? So I will... I have selected this and I am coming here. Okay. How did I start this? You have an option here transform. Transform, okay. Transform. Record into different variables. Okay. Just remember this transform. Earlier we have gone to transform and we have used compute variable. We have used this operation. Transform compute variable we have already learned. Now we are learning this. Record. So that means under transform you have already understood how to compute. And now we are learning record. Okay. <coughs> okay. Record percentage of marks. Bring it here. And now how do we want to convert percentage of marks? What is output? Here you have to write the division. Division. Right? Division. Okay, my spelling is correct. B I V B I S I O. Okay. Division. Now you ask. Output variable, I have written division here, then I will change. Okay? So, percentage of marks is getting converted into division. Numeric variable is getting the output. So, a metric variable is getting converted into a categorical variable. Okay? Now, we have to define. Okay? We have to define the ranges. So, that definition will be given here under old and new values. So, select this old and new values. Okay? Now, lowest through 59.99 is 1, right? So what, where is the lowest range through lowest value? Okay, I can select this range. See here, range lowest through value. This is highest. Okay, so I'll select this and I'll say how much? Uh -huh. 59.99. 59.99. That means lowest value through 59.99 will be coded as 1. Okay? That will be 1. You are able to understand? Yes, less than anything. Ah, less than any value. Less than ah, you, Even if you have 0 or also that will be included. That means 0 to 59.99 will be coded as 1. Okay? Range lowest through value through range is 59.9. We are calling that as 1. Okay? So I will add that means it will come here. 
lowest value through 59.99 is 1. Okay. Now what is the next one? 62. So now I have to. I don't have that option now. So I have to write now 60 through 69.99 is 2. Will be coded as 2, right? Okay. 60 through 69.99 will be coded as 2. Now what is the next one? 70 and above, right? 70 and above means range value through highest here. 70 through highest will be quoted as 3. Okay? There should be continuity here. 70 through highest is 3. 69 to 60 is 2. 59 through lowest is 1. Okay? That means we have covered from the lowest value to the highest value. And 1, 2 and 3 will be the values that will be given there. Okay? We are done with this? Then I will say continue. Okay, if you are done with this, you can say continue. Okay? Then I will finally say okay. See here, you, have, you got the syntax. Lowest value through 59 is 1. This is what you can always have. And that is the reason why you should always save this output file. You should always save this output file. And then from every data file, you should always have one output file. And then you should always try to save this. Okay? Now if I go to my data file, how to go to my data file from the output, you have an icon here, go to data, use this go to data, and the last column, you have division. Okay? So that means 64.58 is 2. 64.58 is 2. Okay? 79.17 is 3. See here? All the values have got converted to 1, 2, and 3. Now how should I define what is 1, what is 2, and what is 3? Again go to the variable view, again go to the variable view, go to division, you have the val values here, values, okay. What is one? One for you was second, second division. Second division, okay. Just say add two, two means? <coughs> Three means first division with distinction, right? Or otherwise, I'll have simply that distinction. Okay. All right. I got other three categories. Okay. So again go to your data view. Now you have this icon. This icon is value labels. If you press this value labels, you will get the distinct you will get the label. So what did we do? We we computed this total marks. From total marks we got this percentage of marks. And then from percentage of marks we got division. Right? So how many students are there with different divisions? You can again go and see, analyze, descriptive statistics, frequencies, okay. do a reset. You have division here. Now you can see here, division is having three circles. That means it is a nominal scale or ordinal scale variable. Okay. So say here statistics, minimum, maximum. See here. So how many students are there with first division? 55. Right? So this is how you get the descriptors. Right? Yes. Okay? Only when you do, you will understand. I am just showing you, no? So you are only passive learners. You are only passively learning. So you, you should have hands-on experience, then only you will learn. Okay? So this is a very simple, SPSS is a very simple software, you should know only how to use it. <coughs> okay, any doubts, any doubts you have? So what is the, what is the learning we have done? What is the learning? Through an example, I have demonstrated how we can convert a metric variable to a 
non-metric variable or a categorical variable. See, sometimes what happens is you will do the data entries. You will have a special <coughs> entry. Okay? You have strongly agree, agree, undecided, disagree, strongly agree. Okay? So generally, this is a Likert type scale, right? This is, a, this is actually an itemized rating scale. Okay? So generally, when the item is positive, for example, if the item is, I like my job. This is the state. I like my job. This is an item on job satisfaction. So what happens? For strongly agree, you will give, give 4, you will give 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is how you will. Okay? And for a reverse, for a reverse, reverse item, I do not like my job. Okay? 